Krishna's shrewdness and the Bhimanna Katte story. The saints hailed Krishna, Krishna, the remover of distress. Do come all of you. Why are you all dismayed? Please tell what has happened. The Munis, recounting everything, said, Bhima has vowed that he will raise a dam before dawn. We are concerned for, about it. From a river, a channel could be dug, but the entire course of a river should not be changed, as it is against Dharma. Bhima is capable of doing it. Since he is under oath, he will not pay heed to the advice of others. Therefore, we look to you, Krishna, to help us in this matter. I cannot also do anything about the bar barrage he, had, uh, he has raised already. His extraordinary prowess is known all over. Krishna, you are yourself discouraging us. If you cannot do something, then whom can we approach? I can do one thing. I can prevent the completion of the dam. I can thwart his hurling boulders in the river. Please do it immediately, Krishna. Something has to be done before daybreak. You may leave now without any anxiety. The rest I shall take care of. And if it, it happened like what Krishna had said, Bhima could not complete the raising of the dam. He could not also comply with what he had sworn to accomplish. When something is pledged, it should be of benefit to others. Only such vows that are morally sustainable will have the blessing of the Almighty. And it is because the Lord had not approved the action of Bhima, we are now in a position to comprehend Bhima's towering deed. Yes, Krishna took the form of a cock and crowed several times near the confluence of the rivers. Bhima, alerted by that crowing, reflected, Oh, it is dawn now. I have not been able to complete the job taken on hand under an oath. Thinking so, he stopped erecting the barrage and left the place. Incidentally, Bhima honoured in the process his promise that he would not complete the raising of the dam if he failed to accomplish it before daybreak. And it is for this reason the dam was left half done. The dam partly constructed by Bhima can be seen there even today. The place is called Bhimannakatte. Above the dam is the Bhimeshwara Devasthana. When Hanuman was a boy in Kishkinta, his mother Anjana Devi summoned him to bring the Tungabhadra river nearer and the land elongating his tail placed it on the, in the river and twirled it which caused a rivulet to come into existence in the direction opposite the flow of the river with abundant water running through it. The small tributary true to the craving of Anjana Devi came near her, the Tungabhadra, however, maintaining its normal course. Truly, if such a thing had been done in the Bhima Avatara too, there would have been no need to erect the dam. Bhima could have actually created such a brooklet by his foot to a distance of 9 km. But if that had happened, we cannot now be witnessing the wonder that Bhima Nakate is. And it was because Bhima's prowess was well known, Sri Krishna himself assumed the form of a cock to outwit him and prevent the completion of the dam. In the Madhva Avatara, following the Hanuman uh, Bhima Avataras, Sri Madhvacharya had lifted with one hand a 50 ton boulder to place it across the Badra river as a restraint to control the onrush of water as already seen in part 4 of this publication. The Bhima Avatara incident may undoubtedly be construed as a precursor to the event to follow in the Madhva Avatara. Just as Hanumanta at the command of his mother Anjana Devi had leapt from the Anjanadri hill, it was a replication of that act in the Madhva Avatara when as Vasudeva, he jumped from the Kunja, Kunjaragiri hill to the front of his house in one stride, responding to the call of his mother, an occurrence that finds mention in the life story of Sri Madhvacharya.
Sri the Hanuma Bhima Madhva Avatars of Vayu Deva are thus interlinked even by the deeds of the characters representative of those avatars. It can, in this context, be said with conviction that Sri Raghavendra could perform many extraordinary deeds because he was a strict adherent to the religious practices established and taught by his principal guru Sri Madhvacharya, who was none else than an avatar of the powerful Sri Hanuman, the samsthana of Sri Achutaprakesha, the guru of Sri Madhvacharya, is on the bank of this confluence of rivers and is known by the name Bhimanakate Mata. Bhimanakate Mata. Sri Madhva had a disciple by name Satyatirtha and the sequence of the above mentioned monastic order is recognized as Achyuta Prakesha Madhvacharya Satyatirtha etc. Sriman Madhvacharya has given as Guru Kanike to Sri Achyuta Prakesha a Damodra Salagrama he had brought from Damodar Kun. That sacred item is in the puja of Bhimanakate Mata even today. Readers may recall that in part uh, 6, I had written about Sri Madhvacharya's presence and movement in the Gantaki area even today, which I could realize through a rare experience that I myself had at that place. I reminisce that often and feel exultant and proud that I had visited the sacred place that Damodar Kund is, where great ones like Sri Narada Magarishi and Sri Madhvacharya had treaded. The Bhimanakate Mata has in its possession the icon of Rama Lakshmana Sita to which the Sanakadis had performed puja. Performance of puja to it is still being observed in that mat. I was told that on the Ramanavami day, special pujas, abhishekas are performed to Sri Anjaneya ensconced at that dam. I expressed my disappointment at not having seen it, but learned that when the level of water goes down, the image of Hanuman sculpted on stone will be clearly visible. I could then console myself that it was providing me an opportunity to visit the place again. I had long to commence writing part uh, 8 at Udupi and after starting it on 8 to 2010, I moved from Udupi via Agumbe, Tirthahalli to Bhimanakate. Fortunately, the water level had gone down then and I could clearly see the dam that Bhima had raised. The deviation of the river in three segments was apparent there. I could also have darshan of Sri Anchaneya sculpted in a stone of the dam at that spot and do Abhisheka to the sacred image with the holy water of the river. I worship the deity wholeheartedly, wondering at the mightiness of Bhima. In the chapter of on Mahishi, I have furnished information about the locale of Bhimanakate and how the place can be reached. Mahishi also is a forest area located on the bank of the Tungabhadra. The incidents that had happened there are in the nature of an enlighten, enlightenment to us as to how the grace of Sri Raghavendra could be obtained, providing us a kind of yardstick to measure our deservedness for being bestowed with such mercy of the Guru. That every action of Sri Raghavendra has a hidden purpose behind it, beyond the ken of our understanding, is corroborated by these occurrences. Indeed, it should be a thrilling experience to have darshan of the Mahishi Kshetra, the surrounding forest area and a bath in the nearby Tungabhadra, providing in addition a kind of exuberance that is indescribable. I could not but help feeling then as to why Tungabhadra should not be running in such a setting in Mantralaya too. But then the possibility for that is very remote. The Tungabhadra river is coursing at considerable distance behind the Mantralaya mat and one should tread on uneven stones and boulders to reach the edge of the water. Though it may look to be just 
at a stone's throw from the rear side of the mud. It has often occurred to me that appropriate steps could be taken to direct the flow of the river towards the proximity of the mud so that water may be accessible in that range throughout the year. But after the deluge of 2009, it now crosses my mind that certain urgent steps will have to be taken to prevent the flood entering Mantralaya Township and to that end I have conceived a plan of action which, if implemented, will offer protection to Mantralaya from such a catastrophe in future. Before unfolding the blueprint of my plan, the questions that have been raised in the wake of the deluge and the answers for those require an in-depth analysis and after examining those aspects, the proposal will be laid bare for the knowledge of the readers and the consideration of the authorities concerned.